plant perspective on flat earth though um i just don't think that we fully understand it which is why we probably didn't really understand what you just said Gio. well it's how i relate the spherical nature of the cosmos is is my under in terms of how i understand how a sphere does exist within this whole system and so we're talking about spheres and gravity and things clinging to spheres and and, and magnetic fields so i'm just describing from my perspective there is a spherical magnetic field that is spinning that surrounds us and then i was just talking about the a lot of these ancient cosmologies that have these different creation stories of everything emanating from the center which also is connected to the great world tree um concepts as well naked i am naked testing testing my mic works yes no it seems like in this heliocentric yeah. model they, okay. they 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 absolutely want to make the earth on a limited sphere they want to make that thing spinning and then they want to convince everybody that that you're one of these little balls within you know spinning spheres within this heliocentric world i just think it's a profound inversion of reality that has very kind of a dark energy to it actually like fundamentally inverting the geometry of reality to convince people of of something that isn't the case that's just gibberish the whole body of science geo Well, it started. It started out with the false premise, and then it was perpetuated with uh, uh, funding for contracts. And shit. Follow the money. Just provide the evidence, man. Well, whether somebody's personal cosmology is a uh, spherical type structure surrounding a plane or not. Either way, um, there still needs to be some motion that's happening. So if we're stationary, then that motion is the sky or something that is above us or surrounds us. Whereas on the globe Earth, yeah, they put the whole thing onto a ball and then make the outer space and then make the ball spin. It's pretty, pretty opposite concepts, really. You're right. And only one is supported by evidence. Oh, like such a thing as nothing? Yep, good good addition. There I'm not the one claiming thing. it. Fantastic, man. It's good. Good job, Briggs. I mean, I don't know about you, Bio, but I'm like the I guess you wanna like maybe defend or like push this globe earth idea, but I guess in my mind it's just it's just such like old news like it's kind of boring to me really because I understand the model and in no way do I think it's reality so I'm much more interested in ex actually exploring ideas concepts possibilities um, and figuring out a way to actually be able to get back to where we can have sovereignty on the earth and be able to explore it freely rather than just going back to this false model and just looping it in circles it's it's just uninteresting to me. Right. Uh, I, I agree. Reality I agree. is yeah, well said. Oh, never well mind. said mate. Re reality is quite reality is quite boring sometimes, Geo. You're right. Um, it would be more interesting to make shit up and explore those ideas without evidence. I agree, 100. percent That sounds like a fun time, but if we're going to discuss reality, then that's going to be separate from all of that. No, reality. The reality is, it's the realization that you're a slave in a system that's devaluing the human race and destroy, well, m making life difficult for the animals that are on this earth. That's the reality, really. That's the main thing. Then you've got to get on with that. And then the flat earth is a, is a release. It's, a, it's the uh, key to like, uh, opening the door and taking back your freedom. That's what that's all about. I got a question. Yeah. If, if something's in motion, right, and something is not acting on it, does a bear still shit in the woods? No. Oh, it certainly does. <laughs> if there's if there's no force if there's no force on the shit, how is the shit gonna come out? 
it's going to come out. Because it's it going depends to be if the bear is still alive or not. Yeah. Because he'll eat, he'll eat the food and it's got to come out somewhere. Oh, the, the bear's alive, obviously. Yeah. And it does consume food, obviously. But yeah, Gio's right, though. Gio is right in his last statement. He said he was bored of this, you know, and he's looking to solve the problems. How do we move forward, is what he's saying. Exactly, we yeah. No, we're def yeah, we're definitely moving. Keep, got to keep it moving forward. I mean, I think the globe discussions can still be useful because a lot of people um, aren't aware of this discussion yet. So I think that mm. when they're able to hear all, you know, the different sides of it, it's very, you know, be more clear for them to see. However, the kind of uh, individuals in this community that want to just like loop, loop in circles with it and just push it, it's the pushing that's uh, also just unproductive as well just in general so i think there's a difference between discussing ideas and when people mm. get into uh forcing or pushing their particular globe idea it's like a different different energy yeah yeah one, one is made up and one is validated you're right completely different energies yeah, yeah i mean at this point Maya, you're just pretty much heckling so it's kind of just toxic and yeah. you're doing the same thing geo i'm responding in kind if you don't like my answer that's fine i don't like yours either but i'm still responding in kind it, it yeah, would be it would be great though if a different theory of how shit works actually was derived through these rooms, one that doesn't have a million holes. Right? The problem is is that you know most flat earthers when they do present their ideas, they're just full of holes. And you know instead of uh, that that is that is a fabrication. Jin, objection, objection. Jin, let me. Can I finish, Jin? Can I can I just yeah, quickly finish? Because because yeah. I may answer your question just by finishing. Right. The problem is, is that when somebody points out one hole, instead of trying to come up with a reason of, of how to fix that hole, people get extremely defensive. Well, you're not answering hey, my question. Me. I'm just saying objection. All right. Carry on. Go on, Gio. No, no, you go ahead. You started first. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say objection because we present the truth. That's what we present when we present the flat earth. There is not one shred. Listen clearly. Those of you who are listening in the chat room in that in, in the, on this server, there is not one shred of evidence for this globe. Not one shred of evidence or proof. We don't experience it. So don't say it's for our our flat earth is full of holes. It's all we experience. OK, thank you. I step back. Yeah, but Gio wasn't talking about the globe Earth, right? Gio was talking about coming up with a, a model, if you want, a flat Earth model that actually works, that doesn't have holes, right? And we don't well, need a model. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, so I mean, the, I mean, the name of this platform is Earth Awakenings, and I, you know, came to that that term, that those words. Um, however, I feel like when you know it, it's not as if I necessarily invented it. It, it exists in some way beyond my consciousness. And I just sort of came to me to, to use the name for this particular platform. But in that sense, um, in, in my viewpoint, the, the, the way that it came through to me is that mm. indeed the earth is not a globe. So there is an awakening happening, a very real awakening happening of humans figuring out what the earth is, perhaps rediscovering what the earth is if our ancient ancestors had had it correct as well and and their knowledge and wisdom and possibly even advancing it so in terms of that the globe earth is not the case in my viewpoint and in many of ours so that was just sort of like we, we can we can still discuss it if needed if other people want to discuss it in a sense however the awakening in my viewpoint is the actual understanding and process of humans coming to what actually is the truth of of this reality Yes, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, but when you guys say model, when they say flat earth model, uh, I mean, uh, they're referring to what, like, the heliocentric model is for what purpose, really, for space travel and, and a map of, uh, you know, a 3D interpretation of a map of a galaxy of a world. 
it, it, the model in the, the flat earth doesn't have this uh, like my understanding of what I understand the world to be is enclosed, encapsulated within a, within a, a closed space. It's not this endless model universe of exoplanets and exogalaxies with plasma everywhere. It's Slow just down. an enclosed container. So mm-hmm. how do you model something that doesn't have these outer rings and outer circles? Like what what are you modeling for? Space travel? The, the, the flat earth. Like, the flat earth. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. Not the, yeah, not the you're galaxy. Not, you're not understanding, great, you're not understanding the exercise, the well, exercise duo, question. the, yeah, ex- mate, I, I the exercise I could... duo is philosophy inside the mind. If you want to have a model or representation, what is the model for? The model for, test, yeah. for reality. testing purposes against reality. Hold on. But it's for that reality. So if your reality is to go to other planets and other planets have this particular pathway, you're going to create that reality and therefore you're going to write it down. See, Flat Earth doesn't have that reality. It isn't yeah. about these concentric elliptical path orbits with rings around them. We, we Everything's agree. enclosed. Everything's enclosed yeah. within a containment, right? So you can't really re- represent that as a model that you can go to and be exterior yeah. of. We're, we're, we're not talking about the exterior. exterior. No one's yeah, mentioning exactly. the model of the exterior. We're but mentioning the model the of the Earth. That's what the, that's what the heliocentric yeah, model have, is. There's, yeah, I, there's this I absolutely agree with you. You said a lot there, so let me jump in for a second. Dude, you said a lot there. That was awesome. And I, I totally agree. And what I was thinking when you said that is that a sculptor, when it creates something, has some medium that it's sculpting. So it has whatever that is, that medium, and then it sculpts out the universe, as it were, whatever that thing is. So in the same way, like whatever this whole world or universe is, that's how I see it as well. Like it's essentially sculpted within a medium, within a structure of some sort. Whereas what they've done with the globe earth model is they've made our globe just this tiny little ball and then claim that there's just this infinite vacuum. It's a very different concept because in alchemy, um, the whole concept of alchemy is you have the vessel and then that's where the life and the transformation exists is in the vessel. So they took that vessel and they just inverted it and completely used a demonic energy to invert it. Data, I'd like to respond to you. Um, we're, we're not asking for one-to-one replacement for the heliocentric model, the, the solar system, the galaxy universe. That, that's not what we're asking for. What we're specifically asking for is what uh, analogous to what Geo said just now, the globe Earth model. Yeah, we're looking what, for the what flat Earth model, for not the beg- flat Earth galaxy. Yeah, I know, but what you're looking, you're looking for begging the question representation of a philosophy because at the end of the day, I can't get outside of the reality that we're in to actually prove that reality. What I can do is look at my reality that I'm subjected to objectively, that I'm in and deduce that it's stationary. There's no curve to it, okay? Now you're asking me to quantify my field of view, which has been done through Euclidean geometry, the sextant and the astrolabe are representations of uh, perspective. What, why are you using models though? So, so no, those are models. Those are actually those tools are derived directly from our perspective, our reality. Yeah. So that's right. There you go. Yeah. Right? That's that's my claim for the globe so, Earth model. Sure. I, I know, but you're asking. You you every, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Every heliocentric, every every heliocentric representation is exterior. You're always outside of the model to see it. I'm saying that you're you can't step outside. There's no outside. We are inside of that whole thing. There's no Thank outside you. of it. So you wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to represent these galaxies of cylindrical selves properly <laughs> because of of what we're seeing for the limited viewer that we are on a massive, massive uh, plane Earth, right? No, so I, I get that. Our, you can take and, and our Bio, vision. Let me just say this real quick. Hold on. Uh, so, Bio, like, just tagging on to that, um, like, if the Earth indeed is not a sphere and it's not spinning and it is a, a planar surface and, and and you're right along with us like meaning you were born in whatever you were 1970 80 however old you are and you were taught the globe earth and it's a lie and you know it's a lie why would you expect because you know at that point you would be the same as the rest of us that have figured that out and unless we have you know tons of money and can do research projects and you know, and so on, how would you expect that we would have some perfect model of the entire Earth? How, how would I expect these really smart people who, who validated that 
uh, billions of people are um, perpetuating a lie, I would feel like those really smart people would find a way to be able to to do all these things. But specifically to respond to flat Earth data there, um, well, we're, we're, we're not just, again. We're not asking we're, for a we're, galaxy we're like, model. We're literally in like we're oh, literally in like phase man. one or phase two. We're just Look, getting man, started. If, if you want to have a legitimate yeah. conversation, let's not over talk each other, right? Yeah, flat but Earth what's data. What, what, I'm, what I'm requesting. So I'll give you an example. Do, there, yeah, the, you, you talk so, for like so, a minute, and then Geo had 30 seconds. I'm just trying to respond to specific points that you were made. That's yeah, all I'm trying I to do. Understand. I understand. You're not looking for a galactic. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm I, even, go, but I go ahead, it. dude. I go ahead. It. So, so the specific thing is that we're we're not looking for a one to one analogous of the galaxy. We're uh, uh, the most specific way I could put it, and the most easiest I think would be a flat Earth map of the United States. That that to me sounds unbelievably reasonable, given the amount of people who are flat Earthers around America. The collaboration, I think, would be easy to do that. the case may be dude i mean most of us you know we all grew up we went to lived our lives you know in our local cities so uh you know people travel obviously sometimes you get a chance to go somewhere else but um it would be a real project to start like if you just threw out all of what nasa gives all of what government gives you know just right out the window said you know what i'm not going to trust any authority that's run through the government let's just say you're going to make that simple thing i'm not going to take my cosmology from anything related to the government i'm going to figure it out myself with my friends if you're going to do that that's awesome uh but that is going to require an enormous amount of resources and energy now the, the community within the, these last you know seven years or so has done a tremendous amount with the resources that are have been available um, and perhaps there'll be bigger breakthroughs in the future like when you know, millions of dollars of resources can be available. Um, but at the moment, we're all doing what we can to to do all of this. And in terms of mapping the entire Earth, yeah, that's a huge, huge undertaking that I think is awesome to do. But the idea that, you know, folks like you and I just that are living our lives would be able to do that, yeah, possible with a lot of resources and time and money, but we're all living our lives. And so we can only do what we can. So, Gio, there's um, I, I see there's a lot of denialism going on, right? So, you know, for example, BioDuel, he did a whole experiment proving gravity, right? That same experiment could be done by uh, a flat earther. But what I haven't seen is a flat earther, you know, recreate the same type of stuff that BioDuel did and actually show that it doesn't work. Yeah. What what example are you uh, referring to there, Branch? Uh, your Cavendish. Cavendish. Sleeping Warrior did it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you, you you did the uh what you circular reasoning? Mass. Attracting balls. Attracting balls. Therefore, mass attracting mass. Like that's. Oh, I, I didn't use magnetic, yeah. Wiggling magnetic balls. Believe I, it or I, not. I didn't use magnets and I didn't use balls. So. But I mean, Branch's assertion was that no flat earther had done it, and I could just point you, Sleeping Warrior. Yeah. Did it, so, so but. yeah, I also I also did it, and I did it with uh, different weights at the end of it. It it doesn't matter the oscillate oscillating pattern that is there, even if you weight uh, for <laughs> the. Hey, Bio, natural... do, do, have you seen Have you seen uh, Sleeping Warriors? Uh, I have not. No. I have not. Uh, no, I... You're using a, an oscillating pattern that's already there to begin with. I'm, I'm not. I'm not using to... an oscillation pattern. So it's already there, right? The mechanism itself oscillates, whether you like it or not. It's already there, whether you have weights at the end of it or not. You hang a bar, it will oscillate. So that the fact that that uh, air is right off the get go, and you say, well, well the solution to that air is we'll just wait. We'll wait. Wait till it's still and stop moving. Correct. But yeah. yeah. Wait. Wait for it to yeah. come to rest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everything is in some motion. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. has it's some just, motion. It's just, it. it's just yeah. You're waiting for the uh, the tension of that the downward uh, pressure due to the density of the object pulling on the string, right? So no, uh, that no. Uh, there's a there's a rotational it, right? there's a rotational mm. momentum, and I'm trying. I'm waiting mm. for the energy within that rotation. To decrease enough in which the movement is not detectable. 
with a 10 foot mm -hmm. radius. Hey, yeah. Can, so whoever... you've, seen, you've seen, you've seen the, uh, uh, the mice experiment on the two rods, right? Where the guy moves the two mice around. No, no, I, I was, uh, I was speaking to my experiment. Seen that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying your experiment has been applied to other things, right? And the two but mice perhaps. at the end of the rod and using magnetic energy to push the rod back and forth, right? So the fact that you want to use this example is beg of the question at what a, a hundred and I don't know how many year at a date bullshit gravity that you're trying to use when there's alternate examples of how you can make the objects move and it's via magnetism. There's a so lot of ways this, to make things why move. Is this, you're right, but gravity yeah, is one of why, them, and that's what I'm validating within my no, experiment. No, you, you're not validating anything because you're not separating the idea. It's not magnetism. It's the point or dielectric uh, uh, magnetism or whatever you want to call the – whatever superlative you want to use to describe the action or function or mechanism. The point is – Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. Yeah. We've talked about it a million times, though. I mean, the, the Cavendish – I mean – to, to make an assumption that it's mass attracting mass again is just an assumption because what you're observing is the movement of metal within the environment or what I would say the ether so there's a medium that, that that's existing within and uh, that would have to be considered to actually look at it in a fair and balanced way in my viewpoint did, right, you, that, ever do it, did you ever do it with turkeys I, I think it was there no not time. yet I, I want to soon um but no, that that's why you you, it, you would you that's why it, you would put the, hold on, man. That's why you would perform this this experiment with the external masses flipped around. Um, you could do them upside down. You could put them on either side of the masses because let's say it was this type of uh, if you subscribe to an ether drift, this drift would occur in one direction. So perhaps performing it in one direction consistently isn't good enough to invalidate that proposal. So you would um, place the masses on the other side. When we have a different rotational deviation, not an oscillation, when we have a rotational deviation in two different directions, depending on where that external so mass is, we, we can invalidate some things. It's still I mean, I personally think the actual pattern is there. Hey, Fred, um, I personally think this is super productive, right? If if we talk about the next experiment that biology is potentially going to do, um, you know, maybe we discuss this with you guys or he discusses this with you guys first and make sure that he does it in a way that you guys will be happy with the results instead of you know coming back later and saying well you should have done this and should have done that why not do it ahead of time and that way when he does the experiment um everybody can you know there's no way to rule out I mean, the magnetic I mean, I mean, or dielectric the, energy the, any of that stuff during right. his process he's using something out of the question this is, I mean, Branch, this is an open research community. So, yeah, people can do their own their own things. But it sounds like you're trying to pit people off against BioDuo, which I guess uh, that happened on another server as well. I, I don't really see any benefit to that. If I mean, BioDuo is free to do whatever he'd like and come to whatever conclusions he'd like. But um, there isn't really, like, uh, any uh, invitation that people are making that BioDuo needs to do something for anyone. No, I don't cool. mean that. I mean that, you know, Bio Biodu is going to attempt to do a Cavendish with, uh, if you want, organic, organic materials. materials. Um, and some people have said at the same time. But so, you know, that's his way of um, negating the, the things that were said to him earlier, which is, well, you used metal balls, which is why it's a problem. So, you know, if he does so decide to do this, mistakes? if he does do this with organic materials. Happens, happens with paper balls, too. And that's an organic material, right? Yep, you can make it move back and forth with paper balls. So if he, let's say he does the same experiment he did last time, but now he does it with turkeys, right? Why would that? Do it, do it with what, what, would, what would be the explanation? Because people were before well, saying, well, magnetism causes it, stuff like that. But if he does it with I, turkeys, what I think is happening, and it may sound. Uh, yeah, I'll just share what I think is happening, which is that the ether itself functions in vortexes. It's the Fibonacci golden ratio thing I was describing before. It's basically fractal, like ether drift is actually fractal vortices. 
which is actually what Bob Nodell from Globusters has mentioned as well. So I think him and I have seen that the same way. Cause when I heard him say it, I, uh, yeah, like anyways, so he, he has said a similar thing in terms of why the uh, ring laser gyro so that, yeah. So basically there's, um, vortices of drift that are like vortexes that is what the ether is made of so you're gonna you're get talking about, you're, gonna, you're just talking about gravitational the, waves now it's the magnetic you're talking about gravitational yeah, it's the magnetic waves field. Like, <laughs> it's the actual <laughs> vortex of, hold on real quick it's just oh, i'll finish real quick it's, it's the vortex can we let deal yeah. finish please hold on, hold on one second let me just finish the thought basic yeah so there's the idea here is that there's actual vortexes within the ether that are creating the ether drift and that is connected to the sun and the moon drift as well. And those vortices are what create the pendulum that does its precession and this Cavendish component is is why those things are, are doing that, yeah. So it's like the path of the sun, it's creating a, a, a uh, the path of the moon in conjunction create a well of magnetic energy above the earth. And as it moves, there's a well, like a, a dip in between yeah that's, that's a cool way life. to see that's a cool way to describe it as well because on that like yeah. like uh macro level the sun and the moon and the stars are and the wandering planets are all making their frequency vortices they're making their spirals yeah yeah i didn't find any of those deviations uh when i ran it for 28 hours well what i'm suggesting is that the reason that you're getting um what you're getting is because the ether medium itself has its features to it. And so if you hang, if you use metal or just whatever compounds you're using, it's going to be connected to that, which is why the pendulum shifts directions during, uh, if eclipses. that was true though, if that was true though, then if you had the identical, same weight, same string, same pendulum apparatus, that they should sync up if dropped at the same point to the same place. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't happen, though, would it? There'd be a, they would they would deviate from each other as well, correct? So if you're setting up a pendulum experiment and you had both apparatuses at the same position at the same angle of release, are you telling me that they would oscillate exactly the same pattern? <laughs> I, I'm I'm not going to continue with you on the Cavendish because it's not an oscillation pattern that you're measuring or detecting when you're when you're doing this torsion balance. I, I've I've I know I've said it before many times to you, and I'm saying it again now. You're not you're not measuring an oscillation pattern. Um, you you can and ma make mathematic predictions as far as where the resting point is, or perhaps um, the the masses that you're using you you can uh derive that but as far as that. when you're making these measurements you're you're doing this when it's at rest when it's not oscillating if if you're making measurements or conclusions while it's oscillating uh, i understand you're, 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 you're waiting destroying you're the experiment you you have something an apparatus that already has a default air in it and for you to justify using that default air is to say well i'm going to wait for all of the apparent motion of it to leave and then i'm going to start measuring the deviation between point to point but to a certain this, extent this, sure this, it's this it when to it, me this to me goes whole, whole when i see this i'm like first of all the apparatus has an air built into it which means it will oscillate back and forth in other words it would cause a deviation now how do you how do you know that well the operat the apparatus you have to wait until it's done that could be an hour it could be 45 minutes it could be two hours it could be three hours the point is you have to wait. And how do you know at that point? How do you know at that point? How do you know at that point is completely ready to go? You observe. You say, oh, there's no more apparent motion. Now it's time to measure. Like it's just a right. to me, it yes, doesn't yes. sound so like let me science. Explain. Let me explain because I did do it. It doesn't sound um, like science at all. It sounds like no, a ad it hoc does. explanation and a contrived uh, observation and then a mathematical manipulation based on the observation. The reason why I say that is because uh, if you have two point, apparatuses, man, if you have two apparatuses side by side and you set them up exactly the same time, two crews working together side by side, both let them go side by side at the exact same time, they would not stop oscillating at the same time. And the deviations uh, would, wouldn't happen at the same time. 
In other words, whatever field At some force, point, whatever please, gravitational man, well, honestly. Man, whatever, yes, whatever effect or mechanism this is causing these points of deviation, you're trying to measure that mechanism and claiming that mechanism is gravity when those two apparatuses would act independently, showing that the effects are not the same. I, I literally ignored the second half of it because I'm I'm trying to make um, I'm trying to specifically respond to your assertion of um, it would be irresponsible scientifically to wait for them to come to rest. The reason why you wait for them to come to rest, or at least an apparent rest, in my case, a I, 10 foot I radius laser that. light. Uh, of course you did. You you called it ad hoc and uh, that. scientific. So, anyways, it's, I'm going to continue. Absolutely. I'm going to continue the same absolutely. way you did. You so, have... as far as this um coming to rest, of course you allow it to come to rest. If you have something, if you have momentum still been built into it, or perhaps your air conditioner is on and it's causing the movement, you you're fucking up your experiment from the get go. But if you allow it to come to mass, use a 10 foot radius using the light, you can see the tiny, tiny deviations of motion. If there's still apparent motion, you don't continue with your experiment. You wait for it to come to rest. Then you make your mark. Then yeah. you would introduce the variable that you're testing. If you so want to use a magnet, use a magnet. I want so to use a non-magnetic material um, and put it close to it. And How try do you to measure do it, it without mass. affecting it again? How, when it's come to a standstill, how do you come to it without um making it move again like no, is it in a right. room this is your baseline from a distance this, or? this is this is your baseline without masses you're just allowing it to to come to rest without external masses there's nothing that you've introduced to the experiment yet you've only set no, it up you're walking up to it to to measure something right it's in a chamber mine was in a chamber a vacuum chamber and you can predict the amount of attraction. You got all kinds of stuff going on in that field. Yeah, I mean, just the the, the wires in your <laughs> wall are creating electric fields, even just in the house that you're in. So there's all kinds of stuff going on within that that environment fields, and basically you're just picking up on a wiggle. And yes, things oh, will wiggle if they're, if they're dangled. They'll wiggle because there's always some motion in the medium, like it's of course the air and the actual weather that we live in as well on the larger scale, but there's definitely movement in that medium. To assume that that's mass attracting mass is literally just a complete leap of logic based on an observation. There's a complete leap of logic in which you think that I'm done yet. That's your leap of logic right now. So yes, Omni, at, in this moment, when it's come to rest without um, introducing any external masses or perhaps your experiment magnets, whatever, when it's at rest, you just make a mark as far as um, where it has come to rest. And be because mine is in a chamber, I could walk by it um, all I want, and I'm not going to cause an apparent motion to that pendulum. I could bump the chamber, sure, and I'll fuck up the experiment. I'll have to restart. But anyway, it comes to rest, and you introduce your external mass to the outside. You don't bump it. You don't push it. You don't do shit to the chamber or the apparatus. Yet, as soon as you introduce it, you start to see an oscillating pattern. But you're not done yet. You wait for it to come to rest again. What you'll notice is a deviation from your original rest point. So if there's, um, let's say, a tetherball, where if it's at I'll rest, it's thing. hanging vertically. Now you provide a force by lifting it and hold it there. The, the reason why it's in a new resting point is because there's a force present. When you remove your hand, you're removing that force, keeping it upright. Now it's going to go back to its original resting point. That's essentially what you're doing here is introducing a force, in this case mass, and you get a deviated um, um, new resting point. It's but not. It's not a wiggle. It's not a pattern. It's just yeah. a new point where it rests because but there's a force. been tested over the span of say like a year or yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah. So you um, can blue, have... blue Marble has. Um, I think he said he's over 500 hours of footage. Um, I I think he's done it over three, four years now, something like that. But he's got like 500 well, hours of footage. I mean, in my viewpoint, I'll just speak for myself. There's no conflict in the observation of 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 uh these devices so i'm saying for myself other people might claim that it's not doing that however first of all it's not consistent so that's one component to it that's a whole other topic of it but yeah that's why i was uh, asking how long it yeah yeah but the larger question is what is causing it and that is where because that's at the thrust of what you're trying to say it's proving which is quote unquote mass is attracting mass that that's your end conclusion that you're trying to claim that this quote-unquote experiment which really it's a just an observation of a device um but anyways that's what you're ultimately trying to claim that it's doing so that that's at the crux of it like 
the, the, the operation of these things, at least in my viewpoint, is not, I'm not questioning that. I am questioning the consistency of it. I'm also questioning the other factors in the environment and the way that it's set up, absolutely. But no. Um, Oh, no, that's legitimate. That, that's legitimate as far as what you brought up earlier. I, I, I should have addressed it and I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, there, there, are, there are electromagnetic fields within your house as far as your wiring goes, as far as nearby objects, da, da, da. all of these, um, all of these do exist within it. But that's the, another reason why you let it come to rest. So if there are these fields that do exist around it, by it coming to rest means that all of those fields, all those interactions are now not causing it to do shit. It's come to an equilibrium due to everything that's acting on it right then. That's another reason why you let it come to rest. So Gio, if, this Gio, was, if this was true, and if it was an effect that was actually true, that means that it would be in the, the pattern, let's say, it would be, okay, for instance, uh, each radio frequency or each, each star has a frequency, let's say, a pattern to it. So in this case, this particular effect should have a pattern to it. Uh, in this case, you want to, you're measuring a, an oscillating pattern is what you're measuring after the energy from the setup has been dissipated, really. That's what you're saying. It's like, well, I fucking set the system up. I moved it around. I got to wait for all that uh, potential energy I put into it by touching it and moving it and letting it uh, stop. And, you know, it's putting some tension here on this uh, apparatus here. It's putting some tension here. That's got to settle out first. And now you want to bring in two extra elements of electromagnetic frequency or magnetism and in. all these all the all these other elements on top of it. You know, you I'm the device, You're just going on I'm and on. Saying, you gotta at least stick to some succinct I know. points. I'm so saying we can... the apparatus itself, the apparatus itself has a default air in it, which is if you're hanging an object off of another object, there is going to be a, a, a tension. In this case, if it's steel on steel, the metal is going to fatigue. It's going to have energy into it because of the sense of the object putting pressure on it. That's going to cause uh, uh, an error to the device. So to anybody to think that this device would be a tool to measure anything accurately to me is ad hoc. Okay. For personal incredulity. Go ahead, Branch. So Gio, um, you're saying that you're thinking the reason why this stuff moves is because of uh, uh, the ether, right? So let's say he does the experiment one time using, um, you know, let's say paper balls, right? Something with a, a set volume and, and geometry, right? Then he does the same exact steps using something that has a, a greater mass, still the same volume, same geometry, right? So the only thing that's actually changed here is the mass of the, the weights that are causing this, right? His actions of yeah. performing the test and everything he's doing is exactly the same. It's just but the match. Are you predicting the rate of attraction? Well, hold, hold on though. I'm just, I just want to see what Gio has to say, right? So Gio, if, if the only thing that's changing is the mass, right? How could it, and, and let's say that when he does the experiment, it, it shows that, um, you know, there is a difference because of the mass. How could that be explained by the ether causing this? Well, I'll just be brief because I know other people want to get in as well. I'll just say this briefly. Um, and it's just my viewpoint as what's going to what's going on. So mass, what we call mass, has an electrostatic charge to it because of the nature of all things have some electrostatic charge. Um, and the mass itself is not attracting other mass. The electrostatic charge is working within the system of the ether. So the ether is the medium and the electrostatic charge is what is causing all motion to exist. Okay, so basically um, you're kind of getting mass attracting mass being caused not by gravity, but by, by the ether. Well, yeah, like there's an interrelationship on, like I was saying earlier, like in my viewpoint, you've got light, sound, electromagnetic, and electrostatic. So that's what matter is actually made up of. It's actually different frequencies of light and sound, electromagnetic, and electrostatic. It's basically, it's the three main modalities of creation that make up the ether. So if you have like the, so the electromagnetic and electrostatic, those are, uh, 
combined in a sense. Well, they're 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 dualities, but they are connected. And then the other one is light, and the other one is sound. So that 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 makes the triangle. And so all physical matter is made up of light and sound, and electromagnetic and electrostatic energy. So by the nature of what it is, it already is vibrating in those ways. And then what we call matter, physical matter, is going to have its own charge in the electromagnetic and electrostatic spectrum which is what makes up the layers of the ether and then the ether itself is swirling it has its own like uh fibonacci vortex structures to it on the micro level like on small scale and on large scale which is what causes the entire sort of flux of the system that we're in so if you're getting something like cavendish that's doing that it's connected to that uh vortex structure as as i see that if you're basically yeah, saying but if that, that was if, true, hold on. If that was Fed, true, hold on, man. That you, you true, keep, you're not letting me and Gio talk. Yeah, but so he, see, Fed, listen, is, if that was true. Are you adding to this field? Or are you going to go on a tangent? Just let him ask the question, man. Well, if, uh, if I, Data, you can go next, but yeah, let, let's let uh, Branch respond. Go ahead, Branch. So, Gio, um, basically, what you're saying is the, the reason why we're seeing mass attracting mass is because the ether is causing mass to attract mass. So regardless of how um, how BioDrew does this experiment, um, it, it doesn't matter because in the way that you're describing it, mass will attract mass because the ether causes it to. Is that correct? Well, no, but it's not attracting by the nature of its mass. Like mass is not attracting other mass because it's mass. Masses might have different relationships to, to each other due to the actual field that it's within and the movement of the field so it's not the mass attracting anything just like with magnets when two magnets attract that's not mass attracting mass that's magnetic fields pulling the mass together okay so so i I guess what we're trying to say here is that you know regardless of what material um or or how biodrew does this experiment again um it's not going to help is it because your explanation of it is basically saying there is no way to do Cavendish um, and not explain it by just saying it's the ether causing things to move because of its mass. Well, to me, it's not really about just explaining something away. Like if somebody else comes up with, if they say, hey, this Cavendish is doing this thing, therefore, and they want to make conclusions on that, I suppose they're free to do so. What I'm interested in it for myself is what is actually happening that's what i'm most interested in so if you have a cavendish device and you're getting these readings on it so there's the movement within the system what is actually at the root of what's causing that movement if somebody else wants to claim it's something else i guess they're free to do that um but i'm I'm just interested in what actually is causing it and yeah i definitely don't think mass attracts other mass by the nature of its mass but the fields that that are the mass and the field that surrounds it can cause this kind of these kinds of like the precession of the pendulum as well it's the same thing it's the it's the same thing that's well it's not the exact same thing it's the part of the same structure that's causing that but it's a different partly different modality but the precession of the pendulum has got to do with rotation right it's about movement this is completely i'm going to ask it over and over again and i'm like I, I don't I don't know why people don't bring this shit up, man. Like how much attraction is expected? How much? It depends it's on the mass. Um, it'll, it it'll, it'll, on the mass. Depend, yeah, it'll depend on the size of the masses that you're using, both the internal and external. It'll depend on the distance from the center of those objects, and it'll also depend on the um, torsion value of the uh, wire that's holding the inner masses. It'll depend on this already. I didn't do the experiment. Did you have an expected rate of attraction and did it perform? No. So I I didn't take um, quantifiable measures. Uh, Then it's bunk. Hold on. No, it doesn't. If the whole point is attraction in a specific way and and all you're doing is saying, well, it attracted, therefore it's bunk. Do, Do you know, do you know why or what purpose my experiment fulfilled? Or, or can I explain it to you? I mean, what's the point of the Cavendish experiment? The Cavendish is to make quantifiable measures of, uh, to determine a constant. My setup, my torsion balance, was to answer the question whether or not this apparatus would deviate under vacuous conditions. And it did. 
Oh, well, great. You proved nothing. In, in your opinion. Which... I mean, it proves nothing. In, in your opinion, yeah, that's fine. You're saying it's I a agree. constant. He's asking you for the right of it, and you don't know. No, I, I do know, but that wasn't the purpose of my torsion balance. Right. So no, wait, the, the, the people come in here, they say, oh, here's two paper balls attracting each other. How much attraction is expected? What is the rate of attraction? Do we observe this? Can that attraction overcome the other forces or friction involved in the, in the observation? Yes. Like, yes. like, I post this shit all the time. Look at this, so okay? Yes. Gravity? Who the yeah. fuck was that? It, the, the answer is yes, Riggs. Is that, just, was that you? What, what could cause it? The, the air resistance or the air... How much air is around it? Like the medium that it's in, the the amount of uh, the density of the air could affect it as well. Yeah, resistance. Yeah, there's resistance. there's air, there is air yeah, resistance is. when there's air around a moving object. Yeah, and it's all calculated for right. And you got the expected that, result, and that's how Cavendish works. No, that's not how yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. How, it, it the way Cavendish it. works is oh, hey, we see attraction, therefore that's no. how it works. It doesn't how prove the rate of attraction. Is. Does it make these correlations? It, it doesn't it does. show. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I'm sorry. Wait. It does make these correlations. It doesn't that. prove it, though. Okay, you could say that. Are you that's fine. That's fine. My that by balance, uh, Democ too. My torsion balance was not doing that. That wasn't the purpose for my uh, torsion balance. I can provide you scientific papers uh, with these. Oh, uh, great. Highly how, about just, how about just show me your rate of attraction? I mean, you went through all the effort to do this experiment. How many hours? You said 25 hours? At some fucking point. What was the rate of attraction? Was it expected? Was everything accounted at, for? At some po fucking point, Riggs. What's the no, point if you're not going to make the point? What What's the point if I well, can't no, explain it without you interrupting? Gravity is so weak. How are you excluding all other influence? I'm not. I'm not going to talk over you, Riggs. Yeah, and you're not going to prove the point either. No, I, I can. I'm just not going to be talked over, and I'm not going to talk over other people. It is quite an interesting question, though. Like, uh, do you have a predicted rate of attraction before you yeah, do yeah. the? Th there is, and, yes. And you were sorry, you were saying that it depends on certain things, and I think you weren't finished because I was going to ask: Would it not depend on where on Earth you are as well? Because when, when the, the gravi gravity is not supposed to be the same everywhere on Earth. No, you're right, and that's. I mean, that's a legitimate question, and that's why it's set up in the way that it is, because we understand per perpendicular forces aren't going to fuck around with the forces that are perpendicular to it. So that's why you set it up vertically. So no matter where you are on Earth or the altitude, if you if you set up it, if you set it up plumb and you have it only move perpendicular to that, then it, then it won't matter what the local gravity is. Look at that number I put in the chat. Tell me if you have an instrument that can read to that degree. Tell me that you actually made a prediction, observed the influence to correlate or prove your rate of attraction expected. Yeah, so, so you don't Omni, have any uh, instruments to that, that accuracy, bro. Okay, so, so Omni, if, um, if money was no object, if I had grants, if someone else were paying for it, if I had to go fund me, I could set up the apparatus in the oh, entire... Oh, shit. At some fucking point, Riggs, at some fucking point. At Riggs. some point, you guys will do it once. 